This wire, like everything else, is composed of atoms. And if microscopes could magnify 10 million times instead of paltry thousands, one of these atoms probably would appear as a tiny elastic sphere, a sphere formed by negatively charged electrons swarming around a massive nucleus of positive electricity. Some substances, especially metals, do not keep their electrons tightly bound to the individual atoms but allow them to roam around aimlessly between the atoms in the interior of the substance. Such substances are called electrical conductors, because if a battery is connected to the ends of a wire made of such a substance, the free electrons drift along the wire, continuing their aimless motions as they drift. It is this mass movement of electrons that we call an electric current.
Hello, Twatchers. That sounds weird to say, right? <laughs> um, we are back. This is the second stream today. This morning, I was assembling and testing some microcontroller trainer kits that are going out in the mail tomorrow. Thanks to those orders. Appreciate it. We are going to start in on a series of videos focused on a subject that interests me greatly, and that is radio. I am also eating pizza rolls. Tonight is going to be the first step of many, many, many videos, I think working on crystal radio in the beginning and then moving towards more advanced things. My goal here is to kind of start at zero. 1920s technology. Eight, I don't know, when was the radio invented? We'll look that up. <clears throat> um, but we're going to progressively step through building a very basic crystal radio, some more advanced and improved crystal radios, we're going to get into some tube technology, vacuum tubes or valves, and we'll just see how far we take it. I, I can't say that by the time we're done we won't design and build an HF radio set. I don't know. I, I'm just leaving it open. We'll see where it takes us. Step one is going to involve coils. Let's uh, swing some cameras around here. And see what we can show you that's awesome about that. Why is my overhead not showing up? Deactivate. Oh, it's because it's unplugged again because USB sucks. And HDMI sucks. Alright. Oh, wow. I've got to get me a real capture card. At least that'll remove the USB variable from all of this. Come on, is this thing going to work or not? The answer might be not. Come on. Don't seem to be getting video out of my overhead cam. I want to turn some audio on. Actually, no, let me do this. I'm going to go to device manager and we'll see if the USB device is showing up. Cameras, maybe? Camlink 4K, yeah, that works. Alright, so it's detecting the Windows. Let me unplug and replug the HDMI port on it to see what happens. Could be an OBS thing, too, but. Bottom line is this is just a horrible experience using these little cam links. Okay, got video now. All right, what you're seeing here, other than my pizza rolls and my diet Mountain Dew, are some sections of PVC pipe that are just random lengths. I haven't done any math here. I'm just picking a place to start. We're going to be making some coils. Inductors. And then we're going to take some measurements and get an idea of what kind of inductance they have. Once we have, you know, a basic inductor, we can take a germanium diode and a high impedance headset and we can you know, listen to radio. You know, we can power the thing over the air. I don't know how deep we're going to get into that tonight, but we'll see. We're definitely going to start with some coil stuff though. Let's uh, take this view a little wider. There we go. So. Crystal radios have been around, well, since the beginning of radio. I mean, they're the first radios were crystal radios. 
Let's see if we can find out. When was the first radio transmission? 1895. That was Marconi. Transmitting from the Isle of Wight. That's cool. You guys have heard of Marconi before. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Target inductance for crystal set coil. Let's get an idea of roughly where we want to be. I guess we should start by talking about what's the use case of this radio. Well, I think the first crystal set we're going to build is going to center around the AM broadcast band. We could take this thing anywhere we want. We could get into shortwave bands, long medium wave bands, HF bands. But we're going to start with the AM broadcast band. Let's see here. Crystal Radio Handbook. You guys aren't seeing this, but we'll get there. Oh, nice. This goes into a lot of stuff. This is a book. Interesting. Well, let's, let's share this, actually. I think you guys might be interested in seeing some of what I'm looking at. Let's see. There we go. Long camera there. Alright, this will work. And then we grab the other source. That's the workbench camera. Let me change one thing. found online and I just googled it I'm guessing it's just a part of something Kevin's web surfer handbook to for crystal radio design theory testing so my question and I don't know if the answer is contained in this book or not but my question was roughly what inductance should we expect for an AM broadcast band crystal radio for the coil let's learn a little This is a pretty cool guy, actually. This talks about materials and their mathematical properties that are going to influence the coil. That's cool. That's kind of neat. Yeah, this thing's formatted like weird, weird and wonky, but that's okay. talk about impedance matching, passive coupling, yeah. Here's the most basic set with no selectivity. Yeah, cool. Okay. Well, we're talking about matching. He's talking 300 to 500 picofarad capacitors. I don't have anything like that we're going to mess with yet. Um, let's do this. Frequency, a tuned circuit made of a coil. L, unit, Henry, and capacitor, C, yep. Here we go, here we go. Here's an example. This gets us somewhere in the direction we're looking to go. So, example, a coil of 0.2 millihenries is connected to a 500 picofarad tunable capacitor. The lowest frequency we can tune is 500 kilohertz. All right, 
so we're talking about LC. So we're going to want to get 0.2 millihenry. Is that 200 microhenry, something like that? Oh, wait, hang on. Maximum inductance in henrys. This guy's starting with a 240 micro Henry coil. All right, so let's assume we're somewhere in the couple of hundred micro Henrys, maybe between 100 and 400, something like that. And keep in mind that the way we use a coil in a crystal radio, in the, the most simple crystal radio I'm going to show you, is that we're going to move a little wiper over the coil that we've wound and effectively tap the coil. Now, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start with a pretty small one. I'm a pretty small piece of pipe here. And we're gonna use that as our baseline. I'm gonna need magnet wire, so let me grab that. I'm probably gonna go through a lot more magnet wire than I have, but we'll start with what I have. This first coil is going to be wound using 22 gauge magnet wire, enameled magnet wire. We like the enameled wire for this coil because we're going to actually sand a little strip of it off. It's insulated, yet enamel insulation is very thin. Arrived in one place, a piece that still spins. We have fun making a radio. Yeah, thanks, man. I'm glad it spins. I'm going to put probably like 100 turns on this coil. I am not going to really worry about being specific yet. We'll kind of learn as we go. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, self, a drill bit would be handy. Screws would be handy. Um, some tape would be handy. I've got some blue tape here, so we'll keep that nearby. And let's just kind of see how this goes. I want to get an idea of where the numbers land before I start committing to you know, drilling holes and stuff like that. So I'm just going to put a piece of blue tape here on this coil. Let me see if there's a way. Yeah, let me, let me angle this camera a little bit for this particular build. I think it's going to help you guys see a little better what's going on. So, fat man belly cam. All right. So I've got the piece of PVC. This is like two inch PVC. Something like that. It's whatever I grabbed out of the garage. And I've just taped the wire under it. I need to straighten how I've taped that because it's currently going to interfere with the winding, but that's an easy fix. Okay, cool. So here's what I've done. We've started just like that. Now I'm going to start winding this, and I'm going to hand wind this first coil. I have a feeling that as we get into this, I'm probably going to fabricate a coil winder, but we're going to start real simple and not get into any of that. Now, you want to have this coil wound as straightly as you can, but I'm also not going to obsess over it. We also want it to be fairly tight. 
something a winder would help us with quite a bit. I'm gonna need to tilt this even more if you guys wanna watch me wind a coil because it's, I don't know that I can tilt it anymore. That's about all I got. All right, I'll, I'll try my best to keep it here on the table. So getting this kind of straight and tight is the goal. And this is a horrible way to wind a coil. This is a terrible technique, but it's where we're starting. I'm just gonna try to keep it tight, and I'll, I'll worry about smooshing them together as we go and get some wire down and all of that jazz. But it's just gonna be something we sneak up on here. Let's see if we can get kind of a decent start there. And keep in mind, people have been making crystal radios you know, for a hundred years and they've wound sloppier coils than me so. so far so good it's working out all right a coil winder would definitely make a lot quicker work out of this, but we're not quite ready for that yet. It wouldn't be difficult to make. But I truly want to walk before we run on this. So we'll show you the most ridiculous things first. Okay, something's wrong about that winding, and I see it, and I gotta fix it. Got a got an error there. I had a turn overlapping something that shouldn't have been. So we'll fix that and then tighten these up. thinking that probably coil number two is where we're going to introduce a winder, but I don't have one made yet. So with this enamel insulation, our wires can be really close together and uh, not short. You wouldn't have much of an inductor if it was just a giant short. more of a non-inductor. <laughs> now because of the nature of this particular coil we're building, or the particular radio design that I'm envisioning for this first coil, I'm not even worried about counting turns or anything like that. I'll know what I have when I measure it and then we can make adjustments from there. I feel like I'm gonna need 100,000 foot spool of magnet wire with all these projects I have in mind. <laughs> and while I have built crystal radios in the past, I don't know if I've ever wound a coil. So if I have, it's 30 years ago.
if you wanted to, you could put some tape sticky side up underneath all this and it would probably make the coil winding a little easier. probably about a third of the way through this first winding, which is very cool. It's a very slow process, doing it truly by hand. getting a little crampy. Now I'm expecting out of this first design, I'm expecting a very specific behavior. Let me talk about that behavior. I'm expecting, I, I live in a metro area, you know, just outside of Columbus, Ohio. And I don't know for sure if there are AM radio stations in Columbus, Ohio, but I bet there are. So I'm expecting to receive a signal on this. I'm expecting it to be um, pretty much the only thing I hear. I'm not expecting to have what they would call good selectivity. Selectivity is the ability to distinguish one received signal from another. So I'm expecting to hear something and for it to just be, you know, drowning out everything. But that's okay because that's the goal of this first set is simplicity. Now it's possible to build a crystal radio without any capacitor. And that's where we're going to start. Um, capacitors are used to tune the circuit, improving selectivity, but you know by, by varying the overall what they call Q the radio and, and I don't fully understand any of this but I'm learning we'll probably learn some of this together I'm gonna go yeah another 10 15 turns and call this good and then we'll see about tightening it up all of that. And why did I choose this gauge of wire? I don't know. I just chose it. I've got 20, 22 to 32 gauge magnet wire here in a box. Okay, I just chose this one. We will see what we get by using this. And then maybe we'll do some experiments and see what we get using other ones.
and we will probably count these turns you know, at the end of completing this coil, but I haven't counted anything yet. That's almost where I want it to be. Alright, let's call it here. So we're going to put a little more tape on this thing. Move some things together and tighten some things up, but that's close enough for first pass. Right, so here. All right, awesome, 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 awesome. That is the start of our first coil, right there. What do you think? Good enough for the start. Finishing and securing this thing up. So that's there. Put one here. Bring this over. And up. And out. Okay. So there we go. And that's a pretty good start. Now, I've got some gaps and things, but I'm going to just try to tighten this up a little bit as I can. I'm not going to obsess over it being perfect. Tighten it up, snug it up. There we go. There's a coil. Marconi eats your heart out. So I wonder where. just tuning in my name is Josh this is project blue smoke monster and this is the first and what I hope to be a, a long and drawn out series of videos on radio technology and we're starting off at the very beginning because that's a very good place to start by building a world's most basic crystal radio Squeaky chair stream, I know, right? That's my ass. All right. So we are going to take a little measurement here. I'm going to cut these wires a little shorter. And then we're going to talk about, we're going to strip the enamel, and then we're going to take a measurement and see what this coil reads. So yeah, nice. So here are my wires. Right there is one. Here's the other. And actually, let's try to get a turns count. Let's see what we got here. Ballpark. That's somewhere between 90 and 100 turns. I'm not going to count it all, but I counted halfway through. So 90 to 100 turns around this piece of PVC. All right. Um, measuring this. I have an LCR meter here somewhere. Let me find it. 
and hopefully it's got a good battery in it. And we'll take a measurement and see what this thing says it is. Uh, breadboard, oops, hand tools. Actually, I don't think it has its own bin. It might just be sitting up here on the desk. Let me look. Is that the only thing I have that will measure inductance? Does this meter here measure inductance? Let me look. Uh, no. Okay, I think it did. I didn't think it did. But I will bring it over to the bench because we're going to need it. Or it's test leads anyway. Now well, let me dig a little more on the meter. It's sitting here somewhere. It's too big to lose permanently. If anybody out there that's watching has built a crystal radio, let me know. Tell me about it. What were your experiences? What kind of successes or not did you have or not? Um, like to hear about it. It's got to be right here. Maybe I did put it into a bin. I did put it into a bin. Of course I put it into a bin. meter decision. Now whether the meter has the right scale to measure these things, I don't know. But here is the meter we're going to be using. So first off, does it have battery? Is it dead? It does appear to be dead. So let's see what kind of battery this thing takes. Angle. Nice. I got those. Come on, Nigel. Get off the clip. Oh, yeah. There's the door. Let's get us a new battery. So let's start up here at 200 microhenries, and we'll see what that gives us. Now, I need to burn the enamel off the wire so that I can connect something to it, like a test lead. And I don't have a lighter at this desk, so let me grab a lighter, and I'll be right back. I could, I could always use, like, sandpaper, but this should be okay.
And if this doesn't work, we need sandpaper. I'll get some, but I want to try the lighter approach first. I should be able to just burn this. Enamel right off. Is it coming off? Yeah, that looks like it's working well. Okay, so there's one. Do the other one. Very cool. Alright. Let's not set the coil on fire. Alright, cool. We should have the ends there. And let's grab a alligator to banana set and see about hooking this thing up, taking a measurement. Blue and green, sounds good. Blue lead up to one wire and connect it to the meter. Green lead up to the other wire, connect it to the meter, and see if we get anything. Well, it flashed at us. Maybe I'm off scale. Let's go. Another click. Oh, oh, there we go. So, zero, really? I think. We are 0.3 millihenries. 0.3 millihenries, okay. Is 0.3 millihenries good? Is 0.3 millihenries bad? I don't know. But that's where we are starting from. Um, yeah, okay, well, whatever. 0.3 millihenries. Now, that's a lot more Henry's than I'm looking for, I think, 0.3 millihenries. Yeah, because if I'm wanting to go to a micro Henry coil, what that's probably telling me is that this coil right here is way bigger than it needs to be. But that's okay, because I can work with bigger. Because remember, we're going to be adjusting. We're going to be tuning things. So I'm going to take this coil, and I'm going to pick a spot, and I'm going to sand across the coil to expose the wire. So I guess I do need to use that sandpaper. We're going to expose the wire, and basically give ourselves a contact point to the coil. All right. Cool. So I'm going to put one more piece of tape on there. Right over here. And that's where we're going to sand the coil. So right there. That'll be our line of sanding. So we'll expose all of that. Um, do I have anything down here to sand that with? I don't. I am going to run and get something to sand with. And be right back.
a piece of 150 grit sandpaper. Purple stuff. Not made by Osh Park though. <laughs> Let's see here. And it's a very small piece, so something small to work with. So I'm going to take this coil and I'm just going to expose the copper. Here. precision operation we're doing. Okay. That looks good enough to me. Now, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take a measurement again. I want to make sure that this thing hasn't dramatically moved. That would tell me that I should create a short. Point three three, yeah, so that's everything's fine. Alright, cool. So we have our coil. And I'll go ahead and pull that tape off that I used. to the next steps. Now, a coil is an inductor. But a coil is not like this. It's not the only inductor option I have. I could, you know, I'm kind of building a mechanical, you know, mechanically selected, you know, wiper type of configuration. If I wanted to go kind of the, op the opposite end of the spectrum and really pimp this out, I could use a roller inductor, which I probably will get and build a crystal set with a roller inductor. Um, that's kind of the premium way of doing things there. But now this is looking great. It's staying reasonably tight. I may snug it up here just a hair, but it's, it's doing okay. Add a little tape for some additional support in an area that I see being a little bit problematic, just to kind of keep things together a little more tightly. But we don't need to overdo it. Because it's not going to matter all that much. All right, cool. So there is our completed coil number one. In fact, I should like label it coil number one for Posterity. Coil number one. And then space. I'm going to actually measure it one more time because I'm going to write it down. Point three one millihenries. Point three one millihenries. Boom. So give us something to write. Later, this will be the last coil we ever want to use because it's going to be the worst coil I've ever made and will ever make, I'm sure. Let's unhook these, label it, and we'll proceed. Now, so we've got our coil. 
what are the other components of a basic crystal radio? Well, you need something to, I'm going to use the word rectify. I'm not sure that that's the right term, but I think it is. We need to rectify the RF that we're capturing in the air. And in early crystal sets, this was done using a elemental material, I think you would say. Um, germanium uh, was a popular you know, thing they'd use. I can, I can use a blued piece of steel and a piece of graphite you know, as a detector. Um, we're not going to do that right now. I want to start with something that I know works before pedaling back in time too much, so we're going to use a germanium diode. Um, let's see, which bin are the germaniums in? Diodes, diodes, everywhere. I know. I have a bin of germanium diodes. Crystal. Very close. I can smell it. Bingo. I label it. All right. Now, this germanium diode is called a 1N34A. There you can see it. A 1N34A. So, the antenna which is just going to be a piece of wire, is going to feed in through the coil that's tuned and then pass through some very basic electrical circuits. A germanium diode is the lion's share of that circuitry. Now there are different mechanical, physical ways to do this. Um, I'm going to play around with that because I'm, I'm not sure. I might even just build it like straight here on the bench to start taping things down. But there's a particular type of mechanical connector that's used. It was very popular when you were building a radio on a piece of wood called a fan, fan, fan stock clip. And I'm going to grab some of those. I actually ordered some. And I'll show you what those look like. It's this little doohickey right here. Basically, you screw it down to a board. And then you push down on this and then your wire gets captured in there. So those clips can capture my diode and I can run wires to and from them. So I mean, picture something like that sitting on a piece of wood. And that's how those clips work. I'm gonna put those next to the diet. Well, I'll keep a couple more out. Six of them should be enough. And where's the germanium? And clips. Got it. <clears throat> now, there are a bunch of different designs of crystal radios. I'm going to pull up the Googles here and find a simple schematic for the style that I'm building here. So this is, is not the initial one we're building, but let me use this drawing to explain the concepts to you. So you have your aerial, not the uh, 
not the girl from the Disney show. Um, but your antenna, big long wire in the air, because you can get it a couple hundred feet if you can get it. This is where your signal is being picked up. So the RF is flying through the sky. We're picking it up on this antenna, and a small amount of current is going to come down that antenna into the house and go across the coil. The coil is wired to ground. So really all we've got here is an antenna, bunch of wire, ground. A ground, a real good ground is important for crystal radio. Parallel to that inductor, that coil, we have a variable capacitor. Now I'm probably emitting that, well I am emitting that from the first attempt here because I don't have one right now. But that variable capacitor is used to tune the coil. So there's a relationship between the coil and the capacitor that ultimately select the frequency that you're receiving. The signal that came down that antenna, just like it's passing through the ground, just like all, all DC voltages is being boosh, going to ground, well, this part of the signal is going this way, and it's going through this diode. This diode is rectifying that signal, because if you remember, this is going to be an AM set, so you're talking amplitude modulation. So you're having you know, a waveform come in, and this diode is only going to let the top part of that waveform pass through, ultimately returning it into, into audio. Now this is a very high impedance connection. Um, you can't drive a speaker with this directly. I'm going to feed it into an amplifier and hopefully it's going to be strong enough to, you know, to hear. Now the orientation of this diode should be, see that little black stripe on the right? That black stripe should correspond with the line in the schematic symbol. So the way I was holding it oriented to the right, I believe, matches uh, what we're showing here on the schematic. Now, because I don't have a capacitor, and because I'm going to use a wiper tuning method, our circuit's going to vary a little. Let's find an example of that circuit. I'm sure there's one here. This is very close. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to emit the capacitor. We're going to have the coil. The top end of the coil is going to feed. That's that's the top end of the coil. It's going to be the wiper point, basically. Um, is it not? Let me think about that. By moving the wiper, we're changing the effective length of the coil. I feel like that's either the top of the coil or the tap point. So in our case, the tap point. So the top of the coil is probably um, antenna connector, and then bottom is ground, and then signal comes off the tap point. So signal comes off the tap point through the diode, and then into our amplifier. So, okay, I think we can do that. So, I don't have an antenna, so we're going to have to start with that. Um, I also need a good ground. Is there a ground right here above my head? I think there is, because there's an electric outlet right here above my head. Let's see if it's plugged in. Oh, no, it's not plugged in. It can be plugged in, I think. Oh, I don't need that. I got ground on the bench. I'll just do that. I'm going to need a spool of wire to craft myself an antenna. I'm going to use an 18-gauge primary wire, because it's what I got laying here. And I'm just going to drape it around the room. So I'm just got a big spool here. I'm just going to drape this thing around the room and bring it over to the desk. And that'll be my antenna wire.
it uh, is shorter than I'd like it to be. But I think we can make it work for attempt number one, anyway. Could be failure number one, right? For those of you just tuning in, my name's Josh. This is Project Blue Smoke Monster. And we are experimenting with radios tonight. We are building a crystal radio. Or at least we think we're building a crystal radio. From scratch. This is, there's no kit. There's no instructions. We're just kind of taking what we know and what we think we know putting them together and hopefully ending out with something that works ish at the end. Okay. So there is our aerial. And it's yellow, as all good antennas should be. So there's our aerial. So let's see. Aerial is going to come into the top of the coil. So those can clip together. In fact, I'm just going to use one of these Wittgenstein clips and clip these things together. The plan eventually is that this stuff will get mounted on like a wooden base, as was popular. Well, as was and is popular. Alright, cool. So that's the top of the coil. Now, the wiper is going to hook to the diode. And I'm probably just going to use a, an alligator clip or something something to start and we'll see where it goes. So I'm just going to put this gator clip here and then this will be what we move around to put that where we want it. I'm going to tape this diode down to the table a little bit. Keep things from flying around too much. So, ground. We need ground. Where are we going to get ground? We're going to get ground right off of the bench. Um, this is probably not an approved technique. Where's a power cord? <laughs> Let's see. Looking. Ah, you see power cables. There we go. We're going to take a power cord, and that's going to be our path around. I'm going to cut the end off of it and make it safe-ish-esque. <laughs> I'm comfortable working with mains power. If you're not, you should not do this. You can run a wire outside, pound a ground rod into the ground, and that can be your ground. If you have a cold water pipe above your head, you can clamp onto that, and that could be your ground. But you just want a good ground. And I just noticed, I have not seen the chat thing. So let me jump over there. Hey guys, now we're back. What is ground in this case? Circuit ground or earth ground? Uh, this is going to be a path to earth. Earth ground. Yes. Mains power does not come with a continue button. So don't mess with stuff that you're not able to do safely. Safety is important. More important than a silly little radio project. I picked a really difficult one to strip too. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I've opened up this cable. And I've got line, neutral, and ground. The 
only wire I'm going to use is ground. And not only am I going to trust that it's green, because it is, I'm going to check it. I'm going to cut these other two off and make them safe so that I can't accidentally come into contact with them. And I'm going to do that by putting a piece of heat shrink over them. Let's see. Heat shrink tubing bin. Not just any old heat shrink. Poly elephant heat shrink. Which is got sticky goo inside it. It's glue, basically. Worked great for this kind of use case. That comes with a game over nice. Ah, I already answered the ground question. Awesome. So we'll cut this. And we'll safety this thing up. And like I said, I will be testing to make sure that ground is ground. I know that it is, but I will verify. Cool. And I'll just tap those down. Nice and flat. There's no way I'm going to accidentally get bit by that. All right, the next thing I'm going to do for additional safety is find my tape bin. The one that says tape is hiding. There it is. And we're going to also use some electrical tape for further safety purposes. All we're using is ground. So, that is secure. We'll fold them back, tape them down, so that even under the tape, should they come into contact with each other, they're not near each other. is going to give me a safe ground. Okay. Next, we're going to test that and verify that we do in fact have ground and nothing else. Not any test. Select. Okay, so. For those of you that don't know, this pin on the bottom, the round one, that's your ground. So we've got that, we've got this. Got it. So we're good. I'm going to take that ground and I'm going to plug it in to the supply on the bench. And we'll use that one over there. Cool. So, good ground. We're going to strip this. And connect it to... I should have oriented this differently. But it'll be alright. The bottom side of the coil. So, we need a alligator clip. So gator and gator would be good for this one. Let's grab one of those. I don't see one of those over here. Yeah, I'll just do this. I'll use that and stock clip again.
Okay, so that's connected. So quick summary, what we've got. We've got an aerial connected to the top of the coil. The middle of the coil is going to be where we try to find our signal. The bottom of the coil goes to ground. Now, the next thing we need to account for is audio output. I'm going to grab a little audio amplifier that I think is going to have um, enough... Um, my thoughts just drifted. An audio amp that has enough gain to be able to show uh, in here. I'm going to bed here. Okay, thank you. And yeah. here, the signal. Now, a question came up in chat is, is there anything special about the electrical tape you've chosen to use? That is a fantastic question. And the answer is absolutely. Um, I am using an electrical tape. I'm going to pull it out so I can show you. particular label is floating around the desk somewhere, but I'm using Scotch Super 3 3 Plus by 3M. This is a vinyl tape that, let's see here, it's good from 0 to 221 Fahrenheit, and it actually has, and it doesn't look like it's labeled on this package, it has voltage ratings of some something, I'm, I'm going from memory, so don't quote me here, something up to like 600 volts. Um, it's real electrician's tape. I'm not using this stuff that you get for 99 cents or for free when you do a PCB order. This is appropriate, approved electrical tape for use with main power. Keep it safe. Can I make the view of me larger? I don't know that you want to see me. You don't want to see what's going on on the, uh, the other stuff. In fact, this is the perfect time to transition here. So let's walk through this. And, oh man, that stupid USB camera, or capture thing went down again. All right, hang on. Let me fix this. I'm having a lot of problems. Yeah, awesome, thanks. Overhead. Deactivate, reactivate. It's going to be stupid again, isn't it? All right, fine. I am ready to say screw it, and we're just going to buy a capture card. I'm tired of dealing with this. USB crap. Come back, please. Got it. All right. So here we go. So let's walk through this. So the aerial is this yellow wire. It comes into the top side of the coil. The bottom side of the coil is connected to ground. This green lead goes to the top side, and it's just slightly out of view, but I think I can fix it. Um, it goes to, why is that thing so loose? Hang on. I got a camera mount this. Really sloppy. All right, goes to the top side of this germanium diode. The other side of the germanium diode is going to be the audio output, and I'm going to connect that to ground as well. So that's audio connection points. And then this is connected to the top of that germanium diode. I'm going to run it along the coil. And that should tune the coil, and we should hear something. So let me grab that audio amplifier, get that wired up, and let's see if anything happens. I have not tested or done any of this. I haven't built a crystal radio in 30 years. So this is new, as new to me as it is to you when we're all riding along together. We're gonna, this is actually a, a breadboard form factor um, audio amp from Adafruit, and I'll, I'll tell you what it is here in a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and use the breadboard on my microcontroller trainer to hold the thing and to give me power. So the amp I'm using is a PAM 
A from Adafruit. Yeah. Papa Alpha Mic 8302 Alpha. It is a mono class D amp with 24 dB of gain. So that should do what I need. So that's all good. Let's get some power. short. We'll use bench power. Now let's bring bench power up here. So I've got, I need to move that actually, up here a little bit. We're going to hook ground to ground. We're going to hit VN. Yeah, VN is the next pen. So that should power the thing up when I apply. Five volts. So let's get my power supply on. We're already set at five volts, so boom. Excellent. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put an audio connection to this thing. I'm going to start with just a wire, just a jumper, to make sure that I can actually hear. That's not the right gender cable. This will work. Okay. A plus and A minus. See, you can, you can hear. I'm sure you can hear that. So the amp's on. Okay, so now we need to connect to the amp. Probably already said this, you wind that coil yourself. I did, I sat here for the first 30 minutes of the stream and winded the coil. It is 0.31 millihenries, which is probably 10 times the henries I need. But I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea where this thing covers. We can actually um, play with some of that if we really want to, and I can find the tuning range of this, but we'll, we're going to walk before we run first, or walk before we stumble anyway. Um, so, we're going to want, I'm just going to get hookup wire. Oops. Get some hookup wire. We'll wire this thing up and we'll see what happens. This is actually the coolest stream I've done in a while. Because I don't really know what to expect. I mean, I have some predictions, but... My prediction is I'm going to hear something and it's going to be really loud. And it's going to be everywhere and I'm going to have no selectivity whatsoever. That's what I'm expecting. And since this is such a hack of a design, I mean, I don't have a capacitor here, so we can't tune really anything that way. This is all inductor. Don't be dissing Henry. He's almost as cool as his friend, Georg Ohm. Let's see. Let's see here. Audio plus and audio minus. So A minus and A plus. Audio plus is going to come from the bottom of the diode. Got it. And audio minus is going to come from our common ground over here. Now this amplifier does not require a connection, a common connection to ground. So I'm not wiring that. You may look at me and say, why didn't you do that? Well, that's why I didn't do that. All right. Moment of truth. Let's see what happens. Let me get the mic a little closer to the speaker here. If I can. Can you guys hear the hiss of that speaker? Yes, good. Let's see what we get, if anything.
interesting. I'm not getting anything. But I also don't have much of an aerial up right now. <laughs> With no capacitor, will it just pick up the strongest signal? Well, the funny thing is, it's only going to pick up the strongest signal anyway. I'm sorry. No, I, I said that completely wrong. It's going to pick up every signal because that's what the thing's doing. I mean, we're bringing the entire RF spectrum in to this thing. But because the inductor has a certain value, it's going to largely influence the frequency that's selected. You can do that with an inductor alone poorly. You can parallel an inductor with a capacitor. I do have something that can transmit. I'm going to go down that road in a second. Um, something with a capacitor in parallel and then use that to tune the LC circuit as well. Um, capacitively tuned radios are going to have a lot better selectivity. And actually what you were getting to with your question was something called selectivity. If I've got a strong station, this thing is just going to hit it and it's going to wipe everything else out and all I'm going to hear is that. But with better designs come better selectivity. I'm actually going to power up a test set here, a CDMA test set that's right next to me. And I'm going to connect the output of that test set to the antenna connection on this. And, and I'm going to transmit an AN signal into it at a very low power level. And I'm gonna kind of sweep it, and I'm gonna see if we can detect it here. Just because we're not hearing anything out of the speaker that sounds like radio, does not mean this is not working. It may just be too weak for it to pick anything up. So it's funny, you're like, you have a, an SDR, and I was thinking to myself, yeah, but let's use a test set. It'd be fun. Um, let's see. For that matter, you just reminded me that I have an antenna analyzer that'll that'll read inductors, so I'm not stuck with just my LCR. Um, okay, so multimeter probe. Actually, no, you know what? I may need the probe I was using on the frequency counter. That's gonna be perfect. Okay, so antenna and duplex out. RF out. Okay. RF out. We're going to connect ground with ground, which is here. We're going to connect this antenna connector up to the top of the coil. Alright. So we're now connected there. I am going to tell this test set to generate an AM signal, so we're going to do a trans a receiver test. I'm going to put it at 500 kilohertz, <laughs> not 500 megahertz. Ah, there we go. 500 kilohertz. I'm going to give it an amplitude of negative 30 dBm. And I'm going to give an AM signal. And I'm going to put a 1 kilohertz audio signal on it. Okay. Let's see if I can pick up that tone. not hearing anything. Let's change my amplitude. Mm 
not not hearing anything. Alright, so troubleshooting. First things first, let's make sure that Josh the Dum Dum did not put the diode backwards. Because the words that came out of my mouth is, I think this is the right orientation. I did not validate it or verify it anyway. Okay. Nothing there. Oh, that came out. Hang on. Try that again. Maybe it's an off-band diode instead of a germanium. It is... It better not be because I ordered it as a very specific germanium diode. It's a 1N34A. I believe the orientation was correct. There are other things I can use as a detector if, if we need to go down that road, so I'm not worried yet. I mean, I'm not worried about anything. We're, this is step one, right? So... I mean, the other thing I need to do is let's make sure that Dum Dum here is even connecting this circuit properly. Um, detect the diode. Yep, coming in from there. Our ground. No cap. Aerial should hit the top. Yeah, that looks right. Okay, let's see here. You know the other thing I need to do? I need to make sure that this test set is putting out audio. Let's get a radio and let's make sure we're actually getting audio. Um, I don't even know if this thing works. <laughs> this <laughs> this will be cool. This radio, this is like the only radio I own. This belongs to my dad. They pulled it out of his locker at work when he died. Sinclair gasoline looks like a gas pump. I think it's just an AM radio. But I bet it works. We'll find out. <laughs> He'd be like, throw that shit away. Thank God there's no battery in it. <laughs> it's a six transistor radio with a schematic inside the cover. How cool is that? This thing probably hadn't had a battery in it in 10... Well, I know it hasn't had a battery in it in 15 years. Could be 25 years. I'm sure it works, though. Hell, we could build this thing. There's a variable tuning capacitor right there. Um, let's pop that on and fire this thing up. <laughs> it's the 16, 5, okay.
Let's see here. Five hundred kilohertz. Enter. Actually, I can't go down that low. I got to go higher than that. Let's go to 700 kilohertz. I'm getting noise from the power supply that's next to it. <laughs> you know what's a good AM transmitter? That Commodore 128 you have? I've got some other stuff I can get into, but... I mean, this test set is perfect for this. I'm not sure that the test set's putting out what it's supposed to be putting out. Um, Okay, there's another way to do that. Let's pull out another tool. Look in here. <clears throat> pull out the hack RF. This thing have a basic transmitter in it that might work? I don't know. Problem with that Commodore is I don't have a monitor yet. Uh, let's get some juice into this thing and see if it has the ability to AM transmit at 700 kilohertz. Um, as a micro. thing to do this. Let me try to find out. So for those of you that don't know, a hack RF, this device right here, is something that can transmit and receive lots of different places. That's probably the best view I can give you of it. So let's see what we've got in here. Transmitters. Microphone, dude, really? Microphone could be useful. I'm just going to say Morse code for now. Porter pack, that's fine. And we're going to set it at...
point oh oh seven. That must be gigahertz. I think I need more points. You guys probably can't see this, great. I'm not real skilled with this point. Is that 7 megahertz? Maybe this thing won't go down that. Right. Let's, let's see what happens. Okay, why can't I get down there? Why can't I get down there? There we go. See if anything happens. I'm not expecting anything out of this. But. No, okay. I don't know that this is what we want. I think I was in a better place, actually, with the, uh, the test set. So I'm going to stick with that. Let's figure out how to make that work. Actually, I can probably make this receive see if we can see that signal as a receiver let's go wide on this view receiver audio am okay Okay, let's try and test that back now. We can at least figure out what scale this thing is in. I'm going to pull power from that since we're not listening to anything quite yet so that it's not too much annoying hash and trash longer than it has to be. It was probably starting to get old. Let's see here. All right, test set's coming up. You guys can probably see the waterfall on that. Let's get tight on it. Here's the waterfall. Okay. Receiver. Test. Let's say seven megahertz. Enter. Are you seeing something there on the waterfall? Seven hundred kilohertz. No, seven hundred megahertz. Seven hundred kilohertz is this button. Seven megahertz. I'm just trying to figure out how to. I don't know what units this is in. In fact, I don't even know. 
I can probably look that up. Let's see. Let's see, hack RF. Frequency range. One megahertz to six gigahertz. Okay, so that's that's seven megahertz then. All right. Well, that'll at least me get me telling if the test set's working or not. So I see a signal in there, but I don't know if it's what I'm transmitting or not. Let's see here. Looking for AM. I think I might have been using the wrong feature. Yeah. Seven megahertz, RF out, AM. not be close enough. Let's get a little closer to it. As in, let's connect to it. Okay. Well, that certainly looks like something on the waterfall. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that's definitely me generating a signal. Okay, so we know that the test set is capable of working. All right. So with that being the case, let's go RF Gen 700 kilohertz. Enter. Okay. I'm not going to get anything on this anymore. So we can get him out of the way. And then we're going to hook up to the aerial connection. And let's get some audio power here. Yeah. Let's see if we get anything. Nothing. Okay. Then let's do this. Let's turn that test set off and get it out of the way. Let's look at fundamentals here. Let's make sure that I haven't made a massively stupid mistake. That's fine. Okay. Voice scout. Um, crystal radio. 
Can I do this? Because that's essentially the design we're working on. Right, or is this a Picard? Picard crystal radio set. Okay, that's effectively what we're doing. Um, yeah, okay. Do you have a real radio? Yeah, it was it's it's picking stuff up. It's just garbage. I've got a real AM, so there's there's strong signals. And there's Yeah, even if I'm getting into garbage, there's there's signals to be heard. Okay. So looking at this, let me show you what we're looking at, and we'll verify our design is similar-ish to this. So they've got a coil. Output of the coil is audio and ground. No. Ground is at the coil. Okay, so bottom of the coil is ground, which goes to the headphone. Okay, that makes sense. Top of the coil is audio out through the diode, which mine might be inverse, reverse. And then between the diode and the antenna is where your wiper comes in. So between the dial, between the wiper and the antenna. So between the wiper So their wiper is tied to the antenna and the side of the diode. Okay, that is different than mine. Okay, so they're not on both sides of the coil. I'm gonna mimic that design. And let's see if our behavior changes. So, let me transition over to the other thing here. And let's see if anything's different with this style of wiring things up. Nope. I'm gonna look up the data sheet on that diode real quick. Make sure I'm not being a bozo about its markings. One and 34A contact, point contact, germanium diode. The line indicates the cathode. Yep. All right, so let's let's follow this. So antenna comes in, hits the anode of the diode. Also is the wiper, yep. The other end of the coil is ground. In one side of the audio path. Okay, I'm happy with that. The other side of the audio path comes out the diet. Okay. So we are mimicking their setup here. I'm gonna see if I can turn this audio up a little more on the amp. I'm not sure I'm able to do that. All right, that's fine. We'll just play with it. Let's take another listen to this.
Well, it's living up to my expectation of it sucking. <laughs> What we don't know is if it's our, um, oh, I've got another drawing hat to look at too, okay. We don't know if it's that we're not getting our F, or if it's an audio thing, or, or what's going on, or if it's just completely bogus circuit, so we've got a few things to look at here. I'm looking at another design that shows ground hitting one side of the coil. The other side of the coil to the antenna, and then the wiper the wiper is actually tied to ground and the other side of the coil. So really, let's sort that out here. So ground hits one side of the coil, yep. And it's tied to the wiper. Okay. That may get a clip. I want to see about making a connection like that. I shouldn't have to do that. But I want to see what happens if I do it. So if I bring ground to the other end of the coil, no, not to the other end of the coil, to here. No difference, okay. Let's see here. I see people putting a resistor on the audio stuff too, and I'm not sure why I need that yet. Let's see, so one end of the coil, the antenna end of the coil is also the diode. So the antenna end of the coil is also the diode. I believe that diode is backwards. Let's change that again. Or at least in the current wiring, I believe it's better. Okay. Oops, that's not a good connection. There we go. Let's do this again. Get my ear a little closer. wire on the coil. I I have removed the enamel from this section. It's a little difficult to see on camera. Well, let's see what we got different. So I'm, I'm not far off on the design from what those guys are doing. I mean, the only real difference is I don't have a crystal set. I'm using an audio amplifier for my gain. Which I think is going to have enough gain. I should be able to hear it. But I could be wrong. I could have a great signal and I just don't have a high enough impedance to hear the thing. So this guy says I'm using 40 foot long wire. My antenna is only 10 foot, you know. Not having any kind of meaningful antenna is not doing me any favors here. So that is also a factor that I need to, to keep in mind. Um, I may not be getting enough RF on the wire. So there may be nothing wrong. It just may be that this setup is not good enough yet.
That's okay. Because we're learning as we go. So let's let's make sure that I've got everything wired. I keep I keep going back to wiring because we're kind of working on a loose schematic here and looking at how others have done things. So in this one, that's an antenna. Antenna comes into one side of the coil, which is this, yeah. I'll see this has the diode on the other side of the coil, so this is even different. Okay. Antenna to that, the wiper. So that's the ground. Wait a minute. That set doesn't look right. <laughs> I'm looking at a, let me show you this. I'm looking at a circuit here and I don't think that would work. But I want you guys to see it. I feel like this would be an invalid design. So on the left hand side, that's your antenna wire. It would connect to one end of the coil. I don't have a problem with that. It would then go down to the wiper of the coil. I don't... I don't think I have a problem with that. And then it goes down to the output. So that left-hand side, that's clearly the ground. So the antenna connecting to what I'm considering ground is a little weird in my head. But maybe I'm wrong. So then on the right-hand side, you've got the RF coming out, hitting your diode, and hitting the other side of the, the, other side of the speaker. So, that seems like it's the hot path. So it's, it's almost like they're tuning the ground here, rather than tuning the other end of the coil. I guess that probably works. Why don't I wire it up that way? It can't hurt. Let's just see what happens. All right, let's just undo all this and start over. I mean, the coolest thing that could happen is that this thing's going to come to life. And we're going to be like, whoa, it worked. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. All right. So the aerial comes in. And this is the part I have a problem with. The aerial comes... Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This picture I'm looking at, I think I'm interpreting this wrong. You know why? I don't think that's the aerial. I think that's a ground wire. That's a ground wire. There is no aerial here. He doesn't have one hooked up. Let's see if this site's got a schematic. Warning, do not under any circumstances plug any part of this radio into a wall outlet. <laughs> That's funny. Alright, where do you want the antenna? Place the screen wash on the right side of the coil and attach the wire to the right side of the coil. Also attach the antenna and one end of the diode. Okay. Oh, I for whatever reason, wasn't seeing that. Okay, so that is to antenna. So got it, to antenna, to diode. And that's gonna be the cathode end of the diode. Okay. I'm sorry, the anode end of the diode. Hear what I mean, not what I say. Okay. And then that's going to go to one side of the coil. Here. I'm going to spin that around. That's too hard to get to. All right.
Okay. And then one side of the coil. Under there as well. Got it. Okay. So there's that. That's audio. So that'll be this. And the other side is ground. Which goes, goes to the other end of the coil. wiper is on the ground side so we can disconnect this one and put it over here all right let's see what we get here Nothing. Same thing. So here's what I think is going on. I I see enough here that makes me think I may just not have enough signal coming in. I may not have um, enough aerial in the air. It sounds 60 hertz-ish. That wouldn't surprise me. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, plug it in the wall and hook up a subwoofer. Nice. Any reason you just can't put the wire almost on the output? I'm not sure I understand the question, but keep asking. I don't think we're getting enough wire in the air. I, I just don't think I have a good enough antenna. I don't think 12 foot of this in the basement is cutting it. Direct couple what to what? Oh, to the test bench? Um, no, I had things, I had things direct coupled, and I wasn't getting, I wasn't getting the signal. So, I need more stuff here in front of me to know what's working and what's not. That's the problem. Um, I feel like the test set is putting out RF, but yet I haven't, haven't been able to hear that RF anywhere meaningful. Um, and I, I should have been able to. So lots of things to test and figure out. Um, so I think next steps. Step one, get an aerial. Did you pick up the test set on your AM radio? No, I didn't. But that's, I don't know that that's because this AM radio that I've got is like unknown questionable condition. So... And I'm listening for a one kilohertz tone. Uh, I do have a spectrum analyzer. What's the idea? Measure what specifically? Uh, it's the same piece of equipment as the RF generator. <laughs> so I can't both use it as a spectrum analyzer. I mean, I could I could use it in like duplexer tuning mode. I could set it up as a tracking generator. I uh, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, I could do that. Um Actually, that won't take any work at all. Let me grab a BNC cable. 
and I'll do that, and I'll make sure that I can see the 700 kilohertz output. That's a good idea. Looking for BNC cables. I'm not seeing any over there. I know I got one over here. Okay, so spectrum analyzer. I wish I had a camera that you guys can see this thing on, but there's no way of doing that right now. Let's think, think before you do things, Josh. Do not blow up the input on this thing. Duplex out RFN. Okay, that way. See if I can remember how to use the spectrum analyzer on this thing. Shift RF Gen. There it is. RF in center frequency. We're gonna make it 700 kilohertz. Get a one megahertz span. I don't really see anything. I'm not sure that I remember how to use this. Let's see here. If you blow it up, you can fix it on camera, yeah. My center frequency is set to 700 kilohertz. I've got a 10 dBm reference signal. My span is set at 1 megahertz. And where I'm confused, here's the thing. I don't think I need to use the spectrum analyzer. I need to use the tracking generator with the spectrum analyzer. Because I'm just looking at an input. I'm not generating. Um, I'm thinking about where the manual is for this. I can look it up. The analyzers input and output are connected together so that I can use it as a tracking generator with the spectrum analyzer like if I were like tuning a filter. 
so that I can see its you know, own signal, but I don't think I'm generating the signal. So I'm going to look it up real quick. Here, you guys can ride along with me. Okay. Using the tracking generator 3924C. And for anybody wondering, this is what I'm using as a spectrum analyzer. Uh, it's originally a CDMA test set. Um, it seems like you can get them on eBay for two to five hundred. God, I wish I got a lot more than five hundred into this. <laughs> um, okay, tutorial. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> to use it, press the power button. You should hear the sound of 10,000 war machine turbines spin up. That's that's exactly true. All right. Um, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Seriously? You didn't tell me how to do it. You called it a tutorial and didn't tell me how to do it. All right, let's see here. I have used this. It's just been a while. I don't want to talk about lab view. Yeah. Here's the key side thing. How about a table of contents? Chapter 3. Yes. Yes, this is right where I want to be. Okay, okay. That's right, there's an RF10 mode in there. Here we go. 
Well, it doesn't show it on the tracking generator, but it's... I'm actually putting... I'm putting the transmitted signal out, and I'm doing a duplex test, and I'm seeing it in, so that's good. But I should be able to... There we go. There we go. Okay. That's what it took. I had to go into a separate menu. I did not have the generator. Generate. So we are now showing a nice, clean... 700 kilohertz audio signal. Well, are we? Hang on. Something looks wonky here. There we go. I got a small span. I've got like a 200 kilohertz span but okay so it is generating well now we know it's generating let's try to hear it on that radio I'm not sure that I'm using it right. Let's do a little more. That's subsystem tests. Really? That's it? You're just going to show me that? Alright, so config tests. Gen frequency fixed. Yeah, RF Gen. So if I go RF Gen, 700 kilohertz. Yeah, that's that's what it is. Okay. AM. frequency here. Yeah, it's definitely definitely generating okay so we're definitely generating a 700 kilohertz signal I'm confident of that and it's on the RF out port here 
So then let's hook this up over here and let's see if I get anything. So ground. And then the antenna side. All right, and power this up. Nothing. Nothing at all. Okay. I suppose this could be a gain thing. Um, let me look and see what this audio amp can actually do. Somebody type something in chat so that I know you're still there. Because it gave me a weird message. Okay, cool. All right, the mono two and a half. Okay, this is a two and a half watt class D amp. It says no, it's not. That's not the one I'm using, is it? Yeah, that is the one. Okay. All right, Geek Boy, you know audio stuff. Uh, two and a half watt amp. What am I looking at gain wise? I mean, is that like a 200x gain? This is a PAM 8302A. All I really want to know is is this thing sensitive enough to be able to amplify a signal coming off of a crystal radio. <laughs> yeah, I can link the data sheet. There we go. Gain. Typical gain, 24. DB. You're thinking it may not be powerful enough of an amplifier? I mean, that would be a consistent suspicion. Because we've got to be getting RF down this thing. Let me see if anybody's used one. I, I guess I could Google that. Um, Pam 8302A. Crystal radio. Why not throw a scope on the output? We can get there. Yeah, no, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Um, it's going to take me a second to move my scope over the bench, but yeah, we can see if there's anything showing on the outside of the diode. Yeah, there's nothing. Nothing. I do have a high impedance set of headphones coming. They're just not here yet. So that is also going to help. We got a bunch of other PVC here that we're going to use for different coil forms. Can you guys imagine just how many friggin' Henrys you're going to get an inductor on that thing? All right, scope. <laughs> yeah, might as well just lay it like that. <laughs> Can, 
Can it operate like that? No, it can't. The power cord is going to be obstructed. <laughs> that would have been so nice. Okay, that's fine. Need another power, power cord. on the thicker side but it's <clears throat> I don't think it's too thick it's typical for what others were doing all right let's go This will be an interesting observation. I'm not even sure what I'm expecting to see, but I'm gonna try to just grab it after the diode and see what I see. Boom, auto. I see stuff. Let me try to get it. Something I can actually observe. There's something there. That's me touching it with my finger. I mean, not the most obvious thing, but there's something there I'm smalling in the corner again hang on all right here we go sorry I didn't change scenes here's me touching it with my finger here's me letting go with my finger so I feel like we're picking signals up through the diode something anyway here's me on the antenna side of the diode actually hand that's me on the antenna side of the diode, and I'm not getting anything there. Run the wiper? All right. It's not really changing. Okay, um, I don't know how to do that. Time scale to like one millisecond, okay. That's like that. Scale of one millivolt, okay. I mean, <laughs> noisy. Then run the wiper, okay. It's not making any difference.
I still feel like I need to get wire in the air. I feel like I'm just not picking anything up down here. Go larger on the scale. Be specific. 50 what? 50 millivolts? Okay. Okay. I'm not seeing meaningful changes. That was me removing a test lead. I don't know how to do that. I am very unfamiliar with oscilloscope use at this level. I can look at a signal or read a voltage, but that's about it. So if you guys can tell me where to go, I can try. Channel 1 settings, okay. Bandwidth limit? Okay. What do you want me to set it to? Looks like I've got 20 megahertz or nothing. Put it in the AC coupling, okay. All right. No, same options. I'll just sit here and spin knobs and pretend like I know what I'm doing, but I still won't. <laughs> no, it does not give me any more options. I mean, I think what my next steps are is, one, get wire in the air, and two, get a known high impedance audio device so that I can start changing variables once I have something that works. Um, I mean, heck, if I just had a little crystal thing, I'd be good, but I don't have anything like that anywhere. Do I? I'm thinking. Huh. 
I don't believe I own a little 101 electronics kit thing anymore. I mean, headphones would be like 2,000 ohms. Throw that across the output in the measure? Okay. I could do that. You know, 2 or 3K is where I'm going to be. But I think a 2K would be easy. Here's a box of 1Ks. Grab a couple of those. Is this a filter we're building, or is this just impedance matching? Okay, let me throw this here. And I've seen people impedance matching on these things. I've seen people putting resistors on the output, but the way they explained it made me think it was for a different purpose. Now I'm thinking it might not be for a different purpose, and it's for this purpose. Okay. Let me just let me plant the probe somewhere. I'm moving very slowly with it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm watching refreshes. I mean, I see some things changing, but I don't see big changes. I mean, you can see that a little bit changing, probably. There's no signal here. This is, you're just looking at, uh, you're just looking at RF right now. There's no test being, test signal being injected. Are you wanting to, you want to try to see that? We can do that too. Yeah, hang on. I'm sure that'll show up. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. There is, let's see here, RF Gen 700 kilohertz tone RF out. All right. Happy? <laughs> Uh, yes, AM tone. Hang on. There you go.
Are you happier with what you're seeing here? And then we're gonna go here. I do see some little changes here at the very end. So I'm guessing that means right in here is where that 700 kilohertz is at. Oh, no, totally, totally fighting selectivity. Nothing, nothing awesome. Okay, that's it. All right. Let me find out. I'm going to look right now to see when these these uh, headphones are coming. It might be tomorrow. So let's see. Doodly doodly do. It is shipped. Arriving, arriving by Wednesday, it says. Track package. Let's see where it is. Uh, I'll have it tomorrow, probably. It's in Columbus now. So, yeah. I'll probably have it tomorrow. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to get wire in the air to give us, you know, copper to grab RF. We're going to get a more appropriately impedance matched audio connection to this thing and let's see if we hear anything um, once we get something then we can continue to improve upon it but this is an okay start even even with what we're seeing here I feel like this has been a good first step We've wound a coil, we've explored basics of the circuit, we understand a few different ways that the coil can be connected. So this was not at all a total loss. Um, I think I'm gonna maybe mock this up a little more permanent on a piece of wood, kind of like was done so that it's not flopping around the bench quite as much. But I mean, hell, look at that. That's, I'm proud of that. That's great. You know, and we'll find out if 0.31 millihenries is anywhere close to where we want to be or not. Um, just too many variables right now and not enough data, so we'll get more data. So that was fun. That was very fun. Down the road, you know, we're gonna we're gonna take this far. We're gonna play with some roller inductors. We're gonna play with air variable capacitors. We might make our own air variable capacitor. In fact, I really really want to. In fact, Geek Boy, go ahead and start learning how to set that mill up. We might have a part or two or twenty four for you to kick out out of some thin aluminum. <laughs> But that was fun. Good stuff. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. I will keep you updated. Oh, yeah, no, I know. Keep you updated on where things are. There will be a lot more streams coming up for this. Um, if you're interested in the content I'm producing, go ahead and hit the follow button. Uh, if you're able to uh, offer support of the stream, uh, there is a subscribe option. Um, anything helps keep the lights on because this is all out of my own pocket but fun stuff. Don't feel obligated to support in any way if you're not able. But thanks for tuning in. There have been a few people here that I haven't talked to before, so I really, uh, really am glad you joined. Yeah, thanks, James. Thanks, everybody. We will catch you guys later. We'll give you the...
cool little smoke intro.